Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Dane Menke. I am the Digital Marketing Manager here at Regenesis and Land Science. Before we get started today, I have just a few administrative items to cover. Since we're trying to keep this under an hour, today's presentation will be conducted with the audience audio settings on mute. This will minimize unwanted background noise from the large number of participants joining us today. If the webinar or audio quality degrades, please try refreshing your browser. If that does not fix the issue, please disconnect and repeat the original login steps to rejoin the webcast. If you have a question, we encourage you to ask it using the question feature located on the webinar panel. We'll collect your questions and do our best to answer them at the end of the presentation. If we don't address your question within the time permitting, we'll make an effort to follow up with you after the webinar. We are recording this webinar and a link to the recording will be emailed to you once it is available. In order to continue to sponsor events that are of value and worthy of your time, we will be sending out a brief survey following the webinar to get your feedback. Today's presentation will discuss retro coat vapor intrusion coating from Land Science with a focus on the installation process. With that, I'd like to introduce our presenters for today. We are pleased to have with us Tracy Fadgett, Business Development Manager for American Industrial Coatings. American Industrial Coatings is the certified installation contractor in Northern California for retro coat vapor intrusion coating from Land Science. With over 31 years of successful industry experience, American Industrial Coatings provides their clients with custom designed protective floor, wall, and tank coatings. Working with Land Science, Tracy and the team at American Industrial Coatings provide tailored solutions to achieve successful results on coating projects using the best testing and surface preparation method for each project to ensure long-term success. We're also pleased to have with us today, Nick Melznes, West Region Manager of the Land Science Division of Regenesis. Nick's role includes providing technical support in the design and installation of TerraShield, NitroSeal, MonoShield, and RetroCoat vapor mitigation systems, and educating the environmental community on advancements in vapor intrusion barrier technology implementation and quality control by making presentations to environmental firms, regulatory agencies, and developers. Nick is a technical sales expert with years of experience in the vapor intrusion mitigation industry, specializing in assisting clients with solutions for the redevelopment of brownfield properties. All right, so that concludes our introduction, and now I will hand things over to Nick Melsness to get us started. Well, thank you, Dane. Um, I'm excited to talk to everybody today as this year marks the 10 year anniversary of RetroCoat. Land Science brought RetroCoat onto the market in 2012, and since then we have seen really tremendous growth in the use of this system across the country. So, as part of this 10 year mark, we thought it'd be nice to put together a webinar that would focus exclusively on RetroCoat. In this presentation, I'm going to talk a little bit about Land Science some of the services we provide, including RetroCoat. And then I will hand it off to Tracy Fadgett with American Industrial Coatings. And he will talk about RetroCoat from an installation perspective. So Land Science is a recognized industry leader in vapor intrusion mitigation technologies. Our entire focus is to manufacture and implement the absolute best vapor barrier solutions in the environmental marketplace. As a division of the global remediation company, Regenesis, we have a really deep bench of experts involved not only in vapor intrusion, but also contaminated site remediation as well. So we work directly with federal, state, and local agencies to provide vapor intrusion mitigation training, as well as uh, having some involvement in VI guidance development. Our goal is to provide or to partner with engineers and consultants and to deliver the best vapor mitigation solution for each individual site based on the property conditions, the regulatory environment, and your client's needs. So a little background on what Land Science offers. Uh, we have a full suite of VI technologies that are each designed for different site-specific needs to ensure the right solution is selected for your project. In addition, we can provide vapor barrier and venting design assistance on any project. We have a network of certified applicators across the country with multiple applicators within each region that we work with on a daily basis to ensure that every vapor barrier and venting application is a high quality installation. 
In conjunction, the QAQC procedures taken by our applicators, uh, we also offer an inspector training program uh, that your team can get involved in. As a certified inspector, you can offer assurance to your client that you are out on site to oversee and document the installation and that the system meets your design specifications. So a little background on, on vapor intrusion. Uh, vapor intrusion has been a hot topic in the environmental industry for some time now. Generally speaking, a vapor intrusion condition can occur when contaminants present in soil or groundwater volatilize beneath a building and diffuse towards regions of lower chemical concentration, such as subsurface conduits, basements, and building foundations. The objective of VI mitigation is to interrupt the pathway between a subsurface vapor source and the potential building occupants. VI mitigation is not typically considered a remediation approach, but the design and implementation of vapor mitigation systems should complement remediation where appropriate. Passive vapor intrusion mitigation, which is really what we focus on at Land Science, involves the interception, dilution, diffusion, or diversion of contaminant soil gas entry into a structure. And the key here is without the use of mechanical means. So these systems physically block the entry of vapors into a building and or will rely on natural mechanisms such as chemical diffusion and thermal or wind-induced pressure gradients to divert VOCs and soil gas away from the building, typically from a subsurface vent network to, to riser pipes and up to the roof line. There are a variety of vapor uh, intrusion mitigation approaches. Um, the pathway can be mitigated from typically uh, the implementation of vapor barrier technologies, venting systems, or actually designing the building around these contaminants. The photos on the right hand side depict a vapor mitigation coating system retro coat being installed in an existing manufacturing facility and a building with a lower level open air parking garage, both of which are examples of a passive mitigation approach. The focus on today's presentation will be on passive mitigation, but specifically retro coat. Okay, so a little summary on the suite of vapor barrier technologies that Land Science offers. We have one single layer system for under slab applications and two three layer composite membranes for under slab as well. Uh, these are in addition to retro coat. TerraShield uh, is a three layer composite membrane which consists of a Terra base layer, 40 mils of our nitrile advanced asphalt latex and then a protective layer on top of that. The terra base is the first layer that goes down in the field. It's comprised of a layer of metallized film, a geotextile fabric on the underside, a polyester reinforced grid, and this is all thermally bonded to a layer of polyethylene. The base layer is extremely durable with the reinforced grid and geotextile, and the metallized film is encapsulated within the polyethylene, which enhances the overall chemical resistance. Nitroseal incorporates the original constructability benefits of a composite spray applied barrier consisting of a 10 mil HCPE base layer bonded to a geotextile and now incorporates the nitrile advanced asphalt latex at a 40 mil application. The land science bond layer is the final component of the system for added performance and durability. Nitroseal is ideal for sites with low to moderate VOCs and preemptive mitigation scenarios where in many cases, engineers or developers want to use a spray applied approach versus a single layer sheet to ensure a vapor tight, robust system. Similar to TerraShield, NitroSeal offers ease of application in the field and is designed to be implemented on a variety of building types. MonoShield is our single layer 30 mil geomembrane, which consists of a polyethylene and metallized film technology a geotextile fabric on the underside of the barrier, and a polyester reinforcement grid on top of the barrier. Mono shield, the monoshield system is comprised of the mono base sheet good and implements the use of our nitrile advanced spray to seal off the seams, penetrations, and terminations. The mono base layer provides greater tear and puncture resistance with the inclusion of the polyester reinforced grid and geotextile. 
And the metallized film and polyethylene components provide the chemical resistance properties necessary for low to moderate level concentrations of VOCs, methane, and radon. As I think I mentioned at the beginning, the entire focus of the land science team is to support your project site from beginning to end. Our team is available to review and make design recommendations during mitigation selection, in addition to support environmental consultants and GCs through the construction phase. Now, that being said, mitigating existing structures is much more complex than with new construction. You know, with new construction, you have a clean slate, but with um, existing buildings, you know, each site represents unique challenges. So initially, the mitigation options for existing structures was rather limited to, basically, you had two options. You could either uh, install a vapor intrusion barrier plus a new concrete slab, or you could install a sub-slab depressurization system. What was missing was a mitigation system designed to be installed directly onto the existing concrete slab and act as a wearing surface. So with that in mind, the R&D team at Regenesis evaluated over a thousand different coatings, resins, and sealant formulations in order to create RetroCoat. The first coating designed, tested, and approved by regulators to mitigate contaminant vapor intrusion in existing buildings. RetroCoat is chemically resistant to PCE and TCE in addition to benzene, and it's the most chemically resistant coating barrier available for mitigating vapor intrusion. It's the ideal product for existing buildings since one, it can be used as a wearing surface and withstand forklift traffic. It contains no VOC, so it will not off-gas after application. And it can also be customized in terms of its, uh, its look, color, um, uh, to really fit the needs of the of the uh, client's uh, wishes. We did do testing, chemical resistance testing uh, to the retroco barrier. Um, the barrier system was tested against VOCs, uh, PCE and TCE. A custom apparatus and testing methodology were developed to mimic conditions that are directly relevant to vapor intrusion. The testing was run for approximately 150 days and permeation rates were determined for each contaminant at challenge concentrations of approximately 25, 125, 250, and 500 parts per million. Retrocoat was determined to be highly chemically resistant to these VOCs, exhibiting diffusion coefficients of 7.6 times 10 to the negative 14th meters squared per second and 8.2 times 10 to the 14th meters squared per second for PCE and TCE respectively, thus validating efficacy of the retrocoat barrier as a preventative measure against vapor intrusion for existing structures on contaminated land. Now we also have a white paper that goes into much more detail on the testing that was done. And if anybody wants to read that, let us know and we'll send that out to you. At this point, I will hand the presentation off to Tracy who will explain retrocoat uh, in greater detail and also get into what RetroCoat looks like from an application perspective. Thank you, Nick. Uh, my talk today, I'm gonna focus on three areas of what RetroCoat is from an installer's perspective, what it is and where we've used it before. I'll give you a couple of examples of recent projects that we've done, one large one and one small one. And then we'll also go into greater detail on how this is installed. So first of all, if you were to look at a concrete slab from the side view, all the moisture vapor is pushing up through the concrete and you'd be really surprised how porous that concrete is. There's a lot of capillaries that can carry moisture vapor into the living area of a structure. Uh, Retrocoat is designed to encapsulate that concrete completely at wall to wall and don't, it does not allow the uh, moisture vapor to enter. So it is a barrier to protect existing structures from contaminated moisture uh, vapor intrusion. It also mitigates against very chemically aggressive contaminates, chlorinated solvents, uh, PCE, TCE, et cetera, all the bad stuff. It can also complement an active or a passive sub slab depressurization system. Uh, it's usually used where it's uh, either too costly or you don't want to displace or disrupt an existing structure like uh, where people are actually living or working. 
It can be used in just about anywhere there's a concrete uh, surface, uh, residential, office, schools, uh, industrial sites, anywhere there's slab on grade or basement and basement walls, and my favorite, uh, elevator pits. It can uh, bond to concrete, C CMUs, or even brick. Uh, as Nick mentioned, it's a two-part zero VOC orderless coating. It's 100% solid, so there's nothing to evaporate when the coating is going down, so that can be installed where people are actually living. It has a very high tensile strength, uh, 9800 PSI is usually much uh, harder than the surface that we're actually uh, applying it to. Most concrete is in the 3000 to 7000 PSI tensile strength. It's also very, very thin. Uh, 24 to 40 mils is the maximum thickness for the system. So if you have doors or openings, it's not going to uh, do anything to impede that. It's also a uh, what we call a wearing surface. It can be used as a finished floor, especially in areas where there's industrial work being done. It can be a non-slip floor. It's also very chemically resistant to uh, concentrated acids. So if you've ever seen uh, what wine, for example, can do to a concrete slab, this protects the, the concrete as well as uh, allowing you to use it as a, uh, a finished floor. Uh, most of the time, it's going to be covered by some other form of flooring, carpeting, tile, or it can actually be used as a base for a, a decorative floor. Give you a couple of examples that we've used uh, the Retrocode product uh, in a couple areas. One is in a manufacturing site, and one was a, a downtown, downtown retail storefront in San Francisco. The uh, Manufacturing site is pretty interesting. It is on the old Alameda Naval Air Station in uh, Alameda, California. It was built in 1941 for the war effort during World War II and has been unoccupied since 1995. So you can imagine what it might look like. Uh, thieves have stolen all the copper for the underground vaults uh, of all the, the uh, utilities that they had in the project. So those all had to be cut off and, and sealed. There were all penetrations that had to be uh, taken care of in the retro code. The uh, company that's going to be occupying the project uh, is going to use it as a manufacturing site. And they had very, very high concentrations of uh, PCE, TCE, vinyl chloride, and, and of course, benzene with all the gasoline that they were probably using back in the day. We did this project uh, in about a couple of weeks, a total of 150,000 square feet. Uh, did it in stages, obviously. We can't we can do about eleven thousand square feet per day installation on retro coat. And it turned out to be a very uh, clean project and they're very happy. The other project that we recently did was a downtown retail retail storefront. And that's something that uh, we do a lot of here in San Francisco. It was a uh, uh, site built in 1960, there was apartments above the storefront, so that was a consideration for, you know, they didn't want to disrupt the uh, people living above, you know, by putting new concrete down. It's about 1,900 square feet, and they were remodeling it for use as a preschool. So there was a lot of concern about what kind of uh, contaminants were coming up through the, the concrete, and they had concentrations of uh, the perk because it was an old dry cleaning establishment and also benzene from a, uh, an old oil storage tank that was uh, leaking nearby. Did about 1,900 square feet, and this took about three days to do uh, start to finish, and uh, they were uh, ready to start entering into the, the project uh, the day after we got done. So basically, how is it installed? Uh, if you call Land Science, they'll put you in touch with your certified installer for the area and they'll come out and do a pre site inspection and some testing. What we're looking for is anything, any contaminants that might be on the ground uh, or in the concrete uh, currently, like for example, oil. They're looking to see if there's any flooring or glue to be removed. We have to remove the glue from the, the concrete because if we start to do the prep process, uh, it uh, in, impedes that. Uh, it, that glue turns to, to rubber when we try to, to, to grind it. Also, uh, we're asking a lot of questions from an installer's perspective. Are there any pre-install pre construction needs to be done? Any trenching that needs to happen before we put the retro coat down? Because we want to have a, a complete wall-to-wall -wall barrier 
for the retrofit. We really don't want to have to come back and re-coat re, uh, an area that uh, may have been uh, penetrated. And then most importantly, we do some uh, moisture uh, vapor transfer testing. Uh, we use a calcium chloride test for that. And that is a uh, little hockey puck of decasent. It's those little white balls you get whenever you buy a piece of electronics. They're designed to absorb moisture. So the way we do that, is we, this is also a three-day test. We grind a one-foot square patch of uh, the concrete that we want to test, and we usually put one of these tests in every about 1,000 square feet of retrocoat to be installed. We give that a day to breathe, we'll let those capillaries open up so we get a, a, a clear test, and then we weigh the test kit, the little hockey puck, and then put a plastic cover over it. This allows the moisture vapor to come up through the concrete and get absorbed by the calcium chloride puck. And then on day three, we reweigh the test uh, puck and we get a before and ending starting weight of the, uh, the hockey puck. So in this case, you can see that there was 0.73 grams of moisture vapor transfer over a 24-hour period. Anything less than five pounds per day is pretty standard, it's pretty light. And we use that information to design the system. Uh, it'll determine what materials we use and how thick the system needs to be to hold back the moisture vapor that's uh, coming up through the slab. From an installation perspective, <clears throat> again, if it's less than 11,000 square feet per day, it's usually a, a three-day process start to finish. The first day is prep. If you look at the uh, picture, there is a machine called a shot blaster. That is a machine that shoots very small ball bearings about the size of a head of a pin into the concrete and get vacuum up with a HEPA filter. Uh, what this does is it removes some of the contaminants of the concrete and also gives us the profile we need to bond or bind the retro coat to the concrete. Also on the first day, uh, as we're doing the, the prep process, you're gonna uncover cracks that you didn't see before and the cracks that are existing in the concrete, those need to be filled with a retro coat gel. And you can see that in the picture on the screen, uh, the white crack has the uh, retro coat gel in it. It's an elastomeric gel that allows the concrete plates to move without cracking the retro coat and also seals it from any moisture vapor transfer. Also on the first day is the a primer installation. And again, that primer is gonna be anywhere from six to 20 mils thick, depending on how much moisture vapor is coming through the slab. We put that primer on the first day, and then on the second and third day, we install the retro coat. Usually in two lifts or two coats, 10 to 12 mils per. As you can see, it's liquid applied. We use a notched squeegee to make sure we have the proper thickness that we're putting down. And then about every 100 square feet or so, we're going to uh, do a mill gauge test on the retrocoat to make sure that it's uh, the proper thickness. And what you get is a complete barrier wall to wall, including any penetrations coming up through the concrete uh, that mitigates against moisture vapor transfer. And you can see uh, in the picture, there's a CMU wall with uh, what looks like uh, a two by four resting on it. That black area is a gap. There's a little gap there that the retro coat did not fill. In these instances, whenever there's a, a wide enough gap, we'll use a, a retro coat caulking that will seal that. And that also is an elastomeric that allows things to move and still be able to seal it. As Nick had mentioned, it, it can be a finished floor. There are different colors available. If you want to use it as a finished floor, we can add uh, aggregate for a non-slip finish in those industrial areas, or uh, color chips or quartz crystals, for example, to give it a more decorative look in, in retail environments. Probably the best thing to do uh, if you have a installation is to get a hold of your representative for land science. They will in turn get you in touch with the certified installer for your area. They can give you a kind of a custom detail of uh, your project and also do that site walk as I explained, uh, but that would be the best place to start. 
All right, thank you very much, Tracy. So that concludes the formal section of our presentation. So now at this point, we'd like to shift into the question and answer portion of the webcast. Before we do this, just a couple of quick reminders. First, we will be sending out a brief survey after the webinar. We really appreciate your feedback. So please take a minute to let us know how we did. Also, you will receive an email with the recording of this webinar as soon as it is available. All right, so let's circle back to the questions here. Uh, here's a question. The first one is for Tracy. Uh, Tracy, the question is, how much water vapor will it hold back? For the standard system, it usually is about five pounds of water uh, moisture vapor transfer per day. Above that, we're going to get into the mitigating primers, the thicker primers that hold back significantly more. But for a standard system, it's usually about five pounds per day. All right, thanks, Tracy. So we have another question for Nick. Uh, Nick, the question is, uh, what temperature range can RetroCoat be installed at? Yes, yeah, so RetroCoat has a pretty wide uh, temperature range. Generally speaking, our rule of thumb is anything above 50 degrees to upper 90s. As you get hotter, it's going to cure a lot faster. And as it gets colder, it's going to cure much more slowly. So if you have a project where it's um, you know, 50 degrees to 60, I'd recommend working with us and we can find ways to, to make sure that it cures uh, quickly and, and uh, you know, the, there are no issues with the actual cure time. All right, thanks, Nick. Uh, so we have another question here and this one is for Tracy. Uh, Tracy, the question is, what happens if I have to cut into or penetrate the barrier after the installation? This happens every once in a while. Sometimes construction projects, they'll change plans. Uh, they'll move a bathroom, for example. The process is to come back and uh, overlap the retro coat that was applied before. We'll do the same system on top of any, for example, trenching that had to be done. If they had to put a 10 foot uh, pipe down underneath the concrete, they would have to cut a trench probably about six to 10 inches wide and then what we would do is just apply the same system, but overlap it uh, three to four inches on each side so that the barrier is maintained. All right, thanks, Tracy. Uh, we have another question here. Uh, this one's for Nick. Uh, Nick, the question is, what is the general cure time for RetroCoat? So generally speaking, um, it's going to depend heavily on the actual temperature, the ambient temperature, as well as humidity levels, lab temperature. So there's a lot of factors at play. But, um, you know, general rule of thumb, after 48 hours, you can walk on it. In most cases, it'll be fully cured before then. But, um, you know, good rule of thumb is 48 hours, and then you can uh, walk on the actual uh, coating. All right. Thanks, Nick. So we have another question here, and this one is for Tracy. And Tracy, the question is, how quickly will this wear down in heavy traffic if it's a finished floor? If it's a finished floor, it kind of depends on what you're doing to it, obviously. Most of the time, these will last decades because it's a very, very strong epoxy base for the retro coat. Uh, in certain circumstances, especially on finished floors, uh, those two lifts that we do for retro coat, we will give you a contrasting color as the first coat, for example, yellow or white. So if for some reason people are dragging pallets, for example, across a, a retro coated floor, the yellow or the white will start to show through. We know the system's been compromised, but uh, generally in normal wear, even with forklifts running over it, as long as you don't beat it up, it'll last decades. All right, thanks, Tracy. So we have another question um, for Nick. Uh, Nick, the question is how, it's kind of a two-part question, how how chemically resistant is RetroCoat and is it chemically resistant to benzene and petroleum hydrocarbons? Yes, that's a great great question. Um, as I kind of touched on earlier, RetroCoat is extremely chemically resistant. I'd encourage taking a look at our white paper and, and reading through the methodology that was used to determine that. Um, with regards to benzene and petroleum hydrocarbons, based on the diffusion coefficients that we have, we can easily extrapolate uh, and compare to hydrocarbons. Um, for instance, chloride solvents are much more aggressive than petroleum hydrocarbons. So 
generally speaking, anything that will mitigate against chlorine solvents will certainly be a good option against uh, petroleum hydrocarbons. All right, thanks, Nick. Uh, we have another question here, and this one is for Tracy. Tracy, the question is, will this hold back actual moisture, i.e. water? Well, no, it's not designed to hold back actual moisture and the pressure that comes from actual moisture uh, water in this case. It's designed for moisture vapor. So if you have a situation where you actually physically see water coming up through the concrete, we need to remediate that first before we put the retro coat down. It will, it will not hold back actual water pressure. Okay, thanks, Tracy. Uh, here's another question. Uh, this one's for you, Tracy. Uh, and it is, can a large project be done in phases? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, normally they are. Uh, I mentioned that the large ex uh, project that we did, the example I gave, we did over a course of two weeks, but that was 150,000 square feet. We were working pretty much nonstop. We do have situations where they may want to do part of the plant or, or part of a residence, uh, part of apartment building at one point in time. We can always come back and finish the project and again, overlap any joints uh, where we might have ended one part and started the next. Okay, thanks, Tracy. So we have another question, and this one's also for you, Tracy, and it is, how do you maintain this product post-install? Yeah, Land Science uh, and, and the cadre of installers that we have have come up with some uh, white papers, some maintenance uh, documentation that we can provide. Generally, it is a product that does not need a lot of maintenance. Uh, again, if you're if you're trying to beat it up, you know, dragging a pallet with a nail stuck underneath it that's dragging across, across the retro coat that could damage it, it won't unbond the product, but it will scratch it to the point where you might have an open uh, penetration to the, uh, to the system, and that would need to be repaired. Uh, again, is that's uh, something that also can be done if you do have a situation where the product is getting beat up, we can come back and recoat it or coat specific areas that have been damaged. All right, thank you very much, Tracy. So that is going to be the end of our chat questions. If we did not get to your questions, someone will make an effort to follow up with you. If you'd like to learn more about services from American Industrial Coatings, you can visit AICfloorcoatings.com. If you'd like to learn more about vapor intrusion solutions from Land Science, please visit LandSciencetech.com. Thanks again to Tracy Fadgett and Nick Melsness, and thanks to everyone who could join us. Have a great day.